Welcome, antibiotic stewards. As you know, antimicrobial resistance is a serious global public health emergency. The inappropriate use of these life-saving drugs contributes to the emergence of antimicrobial resistance, making them ineffective. Ultimately, drug-resistant superbugs emerge and can cause infections we cannot easily or effectively treat. The inappropriate use of antibiotics also leads to poor patient outcomes, including organ damage and C. diff superinfections. As a consequence, the appropriate use of antibiotics is critical to improving the care we provide our patients and to slowing the emergence of antimicrobial resistance. Yet inappropriate use of antibiotics in the outpatient setting is common, and we know that antibiotic prescribing in the outpatient setting is complicated and influenced by multiple factors. Data suggests that real or perceived patient demands and time constraints both contribute to overprescribing in clinics and emergency rooms in addition to a clinician's diagnostic uncertainty and decision-making fatigue at the end of a long clinic session. Infections are among the most common reasons for outpatient visits, and antibiotic therapy is a critical element of management of many outpatient bacterial infections, such as community-acquired pneumonia, cellulitis, and acute cystitis. Having made a correct diagnosis of an infection for which antibiotics are indicated, the clinician must then choose the appropriate antibiotic and administer it in the optimal dose and for the correct duration. Other infections, however, such as acute uncomplicated bronchitis, are commonly caused by viruses and, as a consequence, do not respond to antibiotic therapy. In such cases, the administration of antibiotics is associated with no benefit to the patient but does carry the risk of adverse consequences, as well as contributing to the selection of antibiotic-resistant pathogens. We've developed a mnemonic to summarize these key communication strategies, Get Smart, that you'll see throughout the course. Much of what we are about to describe may seem obvious to you, but it is worth stating explicitly. The first letter of the mnemonic is G. Gain trust. Trust can be demonstrated both verbally and non-verbally. Be careful, cautious, and complete. Wash your hands. Listen intently. Make eye contact. Give clear instructions and explanations. Remind patients that their well-being is your priority. The next letter is E. Empathize. Consciously demonstrating empathy validates your patient's concerns and builds rapport. Again, this can be done verbally and non-verbally. Indicate that you understand their concerns. Next, T. Take time to elicit expectations directly. Ask what your patient expects from their clinic visit. You may be surprised by the answer. Data indicates that clinicians often overestimate their patient's desire for antibiotics and that what most patients want is reassurance and strategies for symptomatic relief. If your patient wants antibiotics and their use is not appropriate, it's important to have that out in the open so that you can manage their expectations over the course of the visit. Next, share findings. Share reassuring components of the history and physical exam during the encounter. This demonstrates that you were paying attention to your patient's concerns and build the case for your diagnosis. Next, M, make your diagnosis specific. Examples of this include viral pharyngitis or viral bronchitis. Avoid dismissive statements, such as just a virus. Giving patients a specific medical diagnosis validates that you believe they are ill, and you know why they are sick. The use of rapid diagnostics may also allow you to tell patients that they do not have certain illnesses that they may be concerned about, like strep throat. The next letter is A. Articulate what happens next. Describe what your patient can expect in a normal course of illness for the specific diagnosis you made and when they will start to feel better. And provide a contingency plan if your patient's symptoms worsen. The next letter is R. Resist unnecessary antibiotic use. Patients may have received antibiotics by you or other providers for similar symptoms in the past. Instead of prescribing antibiotics when they are not indicated because of patient demands, Educate your patients about their condition, provide reassurance that their condition will get better without antibiotics, 
and that unnecessary antibiotics would only expose them to harm. Tell them that we, as a medical community, now understand the risks associated with antibiotics better than we used to. Highlight the public health implications, including the emergence of multi-drug resistant organisms. Emphasize that avoiding antibiotics when they are unnecessary is actually the best care you can provide them as their clinician. Finally, T, treat. Give specific instructions for symptomatic relief. In the cases for which antibiotics are needed, use them. Fortunately, we have national and local guidelines that help clinicians make decisions about which antibiotic choice, dose, and duration is most appropriate for many common infections. Employing effective communication strategies can become one of your greatest devices to ensure your patient feels heard and cared for whether or not antibiotics are prescribed. In this course, we will examine seven common outpatient clinical scenarios, practice clinical decision-making for each case, and emphasize the optimal management of these common infections. We will highlight some of the negative consequences of antibiotic misuse, including adverse events, emergence of resistance, and C. diff infections. But we will also highlight strategies that help us effectively communicate with our patients about their infections and when antibiotic therapy is indicated and helpful. We'll start with a common clinical scenario faced by all outpatient clinicians, sinus congestion. You'll watch two encounters. Take note of the communication strategies that do and do not work in each.